Hello everybody, we're going to be taking a look today at a freshwater wetland out here in these woods. My name is Ben, I work for the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, and uh, as you can see behind me, there is a wooded area. On the ground, we have a wetland. It's very easy to tell where the wetland is. If you look out, you can see all these big green leaves down there. That plant is what's known as skunk cabbage. Skunk cabbage loves to grow in very, very wet soil. Soil that would be considered a wetland. So out here we have a few different types of wetlands inside of this one large area that's considered all to be a wetland. Starting over here we have, there's a spring that comes out of the ground and that water flows through all of this soil out here, keeping it all nice and wet until it flows down to a creek. That creek starts all the way over there, flows across the property like so, and around that creek we have what's called a floodplain, also a different type of wetland. That water comes from the creek. The spring comes from the ground. And the last type of wetland that we have out here that we're going to check out today is what's called a vernal pool. This is a type of wetland where rainwater collects into a ditch in the ground and you can find a whole lot of different species that love to live in these types of wetlands. So this path that you see right here through these plants, this is probably carved out by deer as they walk through the area and just knock the plants down. They like to walk single file to uh, hide their tracks and their numbers as much as they can and they wear down these plants. These plants, the small green leaves are called pachysandra. They are a common garden plant that people put in and they're invasive. They've been chucked down here in the woods because they weren't wanted up in the garden where they were and this was an easy place to get rid of them. The larger leaf plants that you see around here, this is that skunk cap. This right here is a lovely swamp plant that you find in freshwater wetlands all throughout the watershed. Skunk cabbage, this big leafy green, gets that skunk name because it smells like sulfur. It's not a very pleasant smell. And the leaves, they've got that weird stringy thing going on just like celery does. I don't want to eat it because it smells real bad. But um, a lot of animals do uh, rely on this as food, including species like the black bear. There's no black bears here, but if there were, they'd eat this stuff. So here we are at the beginning of the source of water for a majority of this wetland that we've been looking at. This right here, if we look at the ground, is where the spring comes up out of the ground. You can see right here that the ground is nice and wet, and I'm going to step into this to show you just how wet this is. But take this stick and I jam it down into the ground. You can see how it just goes right in and all of this wet soil. This is the water coming up out of the ground. And then it's going to flow downhill and fill up the rest of this marshland. Now it may not look like it's downhill may look very flat, and that's because it's only very slightly downhill. So here we are in a creek. Now this creek itself is not considered a wetland. It's just a creek. It is wet all of the time. It's considered to be water. But what we have around the creek that is considered a wetland is all of this land right here. This soil right here you'll see there is this skunk cabbage. This skunk cabbage is a wetland plant and really makes it easy to know where the soil is wet enough to be considered a wetland. And even though this soil is much drier than what we saw back in that swamp, this is still considered a wetland because it is a floodplain. When we get big rainstorms, all of the water drains down to this creek as it is the lowest part of uh, land around this area. You can see the hill sloping down to it around us. But <clears throat> when you get too much water in this creek, this creek bed overfills and the water will come up over this ledge 
and flood this area around it that soaks all of the soil and makes the soil wet enough that you will see wetland plants growing in that soil. One of the best places to find critters in little swampy creeks like this is if you can find any hard substrate it's like rocks, logs, um, sticks. If you can take that and you can flip it over and there might be critters hiding underneath of that stuff. We can see that right there is an egg case for some type of macroinvertebrate. Now, while you're going through the streams, take flipping stuff over and looking underneath of it, it's also very important that you put it back right where you found it. Uh, the animals put their eggs right where they want, maybe. and if you put them in different places, you could dry the eggs out or hurt them in some other way. He is a baby salamander. I don't know what kind. Yeah, you can see just at the back of his head, um, you can see there's sort of feathery looking external gills there. That's super cool. And he's still got his paddle like tail so he can swim. And he's very well camouflaged with the uh, river or creek by a bed. Oh, I love it. You're adorable. Uh, if you're handling them, you just want to be super, super gentle and make sure that your hands are always wet. Um, and if you had anything like chemicals, like sunscreen or anything like that in your hand, you want to avoid touching them because they do absorb all of that stuff right through their skin and you could hurt them. And I'm going to put him back right where I found him, but I just wanted to give you guys a chance to look at him because he's so cute. So this right here is what's known as a vernal pool. Vernal means springtime. These pools form in the springtime when there's a increased amount of rainfall. The water flows down these hills that we have around us and collects right here in this ditch. If you look, you can see that this ditch was dug out when this big tree here fell and its root ball brought all of the soil up with it, leaving this absence of soil there where this water to, could collect. <clears throat> These vernal pools are a crucial habitat for a lot of species of frogs. They like to lay their eggs in bodies of water like this so that their eggs will turn into tadpoles and hopefully by the time this uh, pool dries up early to mid-summer those tadpoles will have developed enough to where they can survive out of the water. They might even be frogs by that point. <laughs>